Rub up your engines! All right, here we have it. The man won the lottery. He found a little old lady who passed away car sitting in the driveway all dirty. It had 18,000 miles on it. So he bought it. Now it wasn't New York, so maybe it's a scam. We'll find out with my scan tool, see if it's real mileage. I kind of think it is by looking at it, but that'll tell us the truth. Now, these ES300s can last forever. He's already more than double the mileage that it got on it in all those years, you know? Uh, 20 years, he's almost doubled in the one year he's driven it. He hadn't had any problems, of course. Now, he did change the timing belt. Okay, it's 20 years old, right? These old ones do have a timing belt, and he thought, ah, oh, it's old rubber, so he had to change. But even though this is an intelligent variable valve timing, V6 24 valve, this is not an interference engine. After they made these, when they made the 330s, those had interference engines not for too long of a period of time, then they went to timing chains. If you're a gambler, I would have been a gambler just because it has such low mileage. But I mean, if you really want to be safe, what the heck? change the belt when it's this old. You can see just about everything on it is original. It has such low miles, the alternator, the AC. He had to add refrigerant to the AC. They all leak a little bit. And you can see the alloy's getting a little bit pitted on it because it is a New York State car. Let's look under it. They really are known for having problems. And what do we have? No rust at all. Look at that baby. And we'll check out the back, okay? Check it out. It's still the original muffler. Now, how can that be? Well, they knew how to rust proof these things when they made it. My wife doesn't have any rust. Of course, it's been most of its life in Texas and Tennessee. This is a New York State car, but they knew how to build these things with zinc based primer that's electrostatically applied. They really don't have rust problems. Other than the wheels, the alloy wheels got pitted. If you really wanted, a lot of guys will do, they'll sandblast them and they'll either polish them up or they'll have them custom painted to whatever color that they want. A lot of guys will do that if they want to. They're not structurally on sound. They just get pitted from the salt on the road. And if you don't know much about cars, you might think, oh, it's a luxury car. It's gonna cost a fortune to maintain. You know, it's gonna start up. Nice and quiet, and you can see, it's an old luxury car. Not only does it have a CD changer, but it's got a tape deck too, and an AM FM radio. And you might think, why does a car that still is in the 2000s have a tape deck? Uh, the Japanese saw it as a businessman's car. A lot of businessmen use tape decks for meetings and for various sharing of information, and then they just slip the tape deck in and they listen to it. And some of them have recorders that they put information on. That's the main reason it still has a tape deck. Not lying about the mileage, it says 36107, and the leather seats are still in excellent shape, just like my wife's car, because they put pretty good leather on these things back in the day. Even the armrest isn't worn out. Not the sunroof. I'm not a fan of sunroofs, but it has a real key. Basic cruise control. This is before they started putting everything on the steering wheel. Gigantic glove box to put all your crap in. Wood still in good shape. I like my wife's steering better though. Hers has the wood covered steering. This is the leather one. But the leather's been taken care of. Push the trunk button. Look at that. It just keeps going. One big trunk. For those of you who don't know, they're like ice cream trucks. Check it out. Look, that's a little panic. Grab the ice cream out of there if you want. <laughs> Just realize one thing. Let's say you're carrying guns in the trunk. Don't do that in states that don't allow guns because you can access it from inside and they can arrest you. It's not a trunk that you can't get into it. And if you get a really gnarly guy, you might realize that. Reach in, pull out a gun, and you end up in jail. So <laughs> don't carry anything in a state you're not allowed to in one of these because you can get into the trunk. Otherwise, for normal people, great. You can reach in, you can put your cooler in there, grab things, you know. Don't hide your children in there, though unless they're being really bad. Now we're gonna get the big machine out, we're gonna look at the real data. It is old, but on the other hand, it's only got 30 something thousand miles on it, so I don't expect any problems. Now maybe, oh, but it's a luxury car, still got side airbags on it, so I'll get the key back out. Stick it in the ignition. And we get the old out, tail out, there we go, diagnosed. And we will do. Auto detect. Not scanning, we'll look around some more. Got adjustable mirror, just like my wife. Tells you what direction you're going in. The wood grain still in good shape. It's got the nice stereo, premium sound system. Now it isn't all cars, so it's gonna take a little while to go through it. Now it's a Lexus. We don't care about that. We're gonna do standalone. Those it's ES300, 2003 IMZE. And we're gonna do the fault scan. Here we go. It's going through the whole car. While we're waiting, you can see 
She must have had short arms, even the armrest doesn't worn out. <laughs> you never see that in a GM or Ford, it'd be all worn out. Don, it's got one fault so far, everything else is green. A lot of people think, oh, an old luxury car, never buy one. If you get a low mileage Lexus like this with the V6 engine, it's really not that much of a gamble with this real low mileage. Now, if it had been a V8 Lexus, I would think twice before buying it because those, when they get old and break, they cost a fortune. These don't, the V8s do. Realize that. Okay, it's got one coat and the only coat is immobilizer key is incorrect. Well, we're going to erase that. And that was probably because he tried a key that was the wrong key and it didn't work and it would keep that in the memory. So we'll erase that. You can see it's gone. So we'll start her up and we'll look at live data. Like you say, it's an older car. So it takes a little more time for them to set up. And close loop like it should. Long-term fuel, 2.31, 3.09. So the long-term fuel, it's adding a little fuel. No surprise. This thing sat for a long time. I'd say put some of Bernie's fuel cleaner in it. Probably make it go a little bit more. It's adding a little fuel. They do have a tendency of the injectors get dirty over all the years just sitting there. And they need a good cleaning. It runs okay. But you want perfection, you put a little cleaner in it. there. Flow sensor's normal. And you can see the fuel trim is pretty good. 99.15. It's only out 0.85. That's not much. It's less than 1%. But it still has a lot of data in it. No misfire. Injector milliseconds normal. So their misfires are all zero. Now you can barely feel a move when you're in park. There's no backup camera. Good thing the AC works because it's just pouring rain here. It's hot as can be. It's not hot in here with that AC, so here we go. It's not a particularly high car, but it's not low, so we shouldn't really have a problem just toodling over the big bump here. And we don't. It is a luxury car. Pretty good ride now. From what I can see, it's still the original struts on this car. 20 years old, right? All right. Here's the horrible roads in Rhode Island, bumpy and lumpy, but let's see how it goes over them. Not bad, really. Now, you'll always hear some rattling, plastic will rattle over time. That's just what happens to old cars. And he's got a bunch of plastic stuff here that's rattling too, but hey. 20-year-old original struts, it still rides pretty smooth. So, mosey on down to our stoplight here at the top of the hill. Look around. Nobody to the left. One guy to the right. Where he's out of the way. And here we go. Whoa! This thing has power. That proves that it only has 36,000 miles on it. Hey, it's a lot faster than my wife's Lexus. <laughs> and it would have been even faster except the traction control kicked in. Otherwise, it'd really be smoking. Still corners perfectly well. Hey, this is still a great luxury car. You find a little old lady car like this, hey, snap it up. You barely think the thing's even moving down the road. It's so quiet. Back in we go. One smooth ride. Maybe old, but it's still smooth. So there you have it, a little old lady's car that doesn't run like a little old lady's car. I don't even care if you want to buy the thing. Buy it anyway. You can make money selling it to somebody else or sell it at the same price and you'll have a friend for life. These things can run forever. And as you can see, a New York State car, was it rusted? No, because they knew how to make them so they don't rust. What a deal. And like I say, they don't make them like they used to. 18,000 miles on it, buy it. Listen to me, buy it. As long as it's all crushed, then buy it. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Frank L says, my fuel pump fuse keeps blowing when I refuel. It's a Nissan 2019 NV200. If it only happens when you refuel the car, I'm thinking it's something to do with your anti-pollution system, your EVAP system. It keeps the vapors, the gasoline, when you fill it up, instead of going to the atmosphere, it goes to the charcoal canister, EVAP vent valve. I would first check the EVAP vent valve, okay? That's electronic. If it was shorting out, it could pop your fuel pump fuse, right? The only other thing Thing would be you got some kind of an electric short when your tank is full the extra pressure of the gasoline is pushing on the fuel pump making it internally short out so you might need a new fuel pump they're relatively expensive on those things you didn't say how many miles you have i can tell you right now like if it's real high mileage what it's five years old it's got high mileage on it you're probably going to need a fuel pump if it pops that fuse it's a reasonably big fuse and all the weight of the gasoline pushing on the pump which is in the bottom of the tank could short it out and that's probably what it is it's probably the pump is internally shorting out bowtie 409 says i got a 22 tacoma 5,000 miles is it ever okay to spray the engine compartment down with water to clean it no it isn't 
Water and electricity don't go together, and that thing has more electronic crap on it. It would make your head spin. Now, it's sealed to some extent, right? You're driving in the rain, but you're not hosing it down, right? Never do something like that. There's no reason to clean a Toyota Tacoma that has 5,000 miles. Now, let's say you're an off-roader and you're getting it covered with mud. Well, then you're in a pickle because you're either going to have to clean the mud off or live with the mud. And generally, the mud isn't going to hurt anything. You might just leave the mud on, right? Because you start spraying high pressure water in there where all the computer modules are, all the electronics, the fuel injectors, you know, the alternator. You can end up screwing things up. Engines aren't made to spray water in them. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.